Hey, welcome to blah, 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 blah. I am blah, 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 and this is episode... Who gives a shit? Welcome. Oh, that was real for a second. No, this is real. This is the, <laughs> that's the beginning. Enjoy. Uh, we got Randy and Martin here. Hello, everybody. What's up, guys? Hello. That was horrible. That was awful, and I don't care. I've had a shitty, shitty okay, week. Excuse me, Jay, I'm one of your biggest fans. What episode is this? This is episode, uh, it's episode 31 if you really give a shit. Oh, I thought it was blah, blah, blah. Well, maybe I'll just put it up as episode blah, blah, blah. It'll be like a bonus. Maybe people will be intrigued. Yep. There you go. Then uh, all our groupies can uh, talk about <laughs> the secret blah, blah, blah episode. Uh, it's blah, blah, blah because I'm a little um, blah, disgruntled. Blah, blah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very blah, blah, blah. I'm a little disgruntled. Uh... I keep trying to do stuff for the show, get new listeners, make the show better. Everything I do takes about eight times as long as it should, and uh, just seems like it's not worth it. And it's starting to get me pissed off. Uh, I'm referring to the shirts. I am getting Brink of Sanity shirts. Uh, oh, where can we find those? So far, nowhere. So far, you can't get those anywhere. Wow, they been, must be worth a lot then. This has been going on for over a month, and I think the uh, the person that is making the shirts might very well be a uh, special person. And by special, I mean stupid, because uh, it's not that hard. You go, you know, I want this shirt in this color, fucking make it. Like, is it, you know, it's not a complicated process. You know, you send them the logo put it on a shirt, and you give it to me. Uh, no. Apparently, this is the hardest task ever. We've been going back and forth for over a month. I, uh, I sent him, the, he goes, pick from these colors, and he sent me a link to his website. So, not only do I write down the colors, I send him links from his website. Going, I want this color, bam, there's the link. And I want this color, bam, there's the link. That should have been the end of the conversation. Uh, yesterday, I get an email back saying um, the logo uh, doesn't look good on the shirt because the black in the logo is kind of, you know, blending into the shirt. So he took a picture and he sent it to me, and it's not the color that I sent them. It, like I picked like a like a light. It's called like chocolate. It's like a light brown, and he decided to change that into like an almost blackish brown so dark that like all my colors blend in so I'm trying to not flip out at work like I, I get this email at work and I I'm ready to just destroy shit and because I paid four hundred dollars for these shirts and like everything is fucked up uh, so I go well instead of like the the color you just decided to use why don't you go back and make the shirts on the color I asked for a month ago and see if the logo shows up on that color because that's what I asked and paid for, so you might want to try that color. You know, trying to, like, not be like you're a fucking stupid dickhead. And, um, I also got this, uh, dark gray color, and he put it on, like, this light, not solid gray color that, uh, hopefully people like, because it looks like I'm getting about 15 of them, so, uh, hopefully <laughs> somebody likes them. Uh, Can you cancel your order? I am close to it. Now he says he's going to send me half of the correct gray color for no extra charge. And then he's going to send me all of the wrong gray color. and For full charge? For full charge. And all the correct brown ones for full charge. Wait. What? That makes no sense. So I'm getting... <laughs> so basically I'm, I'm getting like six or seven extra shirts. But those extra shirts are actually the correct ones. And the ones I paid for the wrong one. So basically, I'm getting. So you're getting like two percent off the order. I'm, well, and mostly wrong stuff. I'm getting seventy five percent of what I ordered, and twenty five percent of what I didn't order, for full price. Wow. Yeah. So I'm. I'm How did you find this guy? Uh, this guy at work. Uh, said he his Found boy. Found him walking on the street. His boy makes awesome shirts. And he highly recommends them. His boy meaning a four-year-old? <laughs> uh, I'm thinking that now because <laughs> following links is too difficult. So I figured, like, 
well, if this is this guy's friend, he's going to want to do an extra good job to not piss his buddy off. Because, you know, I emailed him, I'm like, hey, blah, 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 referred me, you know, figuring, like, even if, because the kid at work is an idiot. Uh, but I figured even if his friend's an idiot, he's going to want to do a good job to, you know, impress his friend. And if you're and listening to this, uh, you're not an idiot. Uh, you know, I just said that. Jokes. <laughs> yeah, jokes. It's Here's a joke the thing. Show. I don't think you need to be an attorney to know this. Uh-huh. But I think that if you paid for something specific and you're not getting that item, you shouldn't pay for it. Well, it's called, it's called consideration, I would say. Right, well, really I want to see I want to see what I end up with if if the 75% of the shirts are okay and then I still get a whole bunch of ones I didn't want. I could probably deal with that as long as they're not awful. I have to see what they look like first. I think you should negotiate a reduced fee. I can do that for you as the attorney for a t-shirt. Wow. <laughs> That's Don't they expensive. say you get what you pay for, though? Oh, never mind. Yeah. $400. I should be getting a, <laughs> should be getting a lot. It's only lot 30 shirts. shirts. I mean, you know. $400 like, for 30 t-shirts? Yeah, exactly. So I'm making zero money on this when we get them, by the way, so... Well, if you charge like twenty bucks, I'm not. I'm charging fifteen because I feel like I'll be happy if people buy them at fifteen. Like nobody's gonna buy them at twenty, you know. I'll, I'll sell them at fifteen, and I'll just get rid of them. You could have made something really cool up. Like I, I want to stay loyal to my fans. I feel like they've been good to me. I don't want to rip them off. Well, that's what was implied. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, like, I really want them to wear the shirt. No, the three color, the three sure. quarters of the shirts look really good, and they're really nice. Uh, I'm assuming. If they don't, I'm shipping them back in a box, and I'm sending them back to them, yeah. and I'm gonna be like, give me my money back. But if the three quarters of the shirts look really good, uh, and the other quarter uh, will be for prize giveaways, then I'm I'm happy with that. So, um, and you know what, the the quarter I didn't want, they're not the color I want, but they still might look cool. I, it's true. I just flipped that when I saw the wrong color. They they might still look good. Well, it's not like that hard of a request. I mean, come on. No, it's the easiest task ever. That's why I was so mad. And then the guy starts giving me an attitude because I'm like, uh, you know, getting mad. And he's like, well, I'll uh, I'll add some of the right color. And I wrote back, like, you're the one who switched the colors on me in the first place. What are you talking about? Like, you know, he's like giving me an attitude. I was just. Have you paid him yet? Yes, I paid him already because I thought the oh, shirts were done. He sent me an invoice. God. Deliver goes, versus payment, my friend. Yeah, he goes, I wrote on the invoice oh. uh, shirt color like 3539. And I'm like, so you expected me to go to your website and look mm -hmm. up 3539? Like, Why I, did you pay the whole thing, though? Because I thought, I assumed. Because you're trusting. Yeah, I assumed he was confident and I was going to get what I ordered. I'm like, well, why did you change the color? Like. I'm not going to go look up this number you wrote on the invoice. I assumed you put in the color I asked for. And uh, apparently that was a mistake. So now I'm giving nobody the benefit of the doubt. Like, I'm going to treat everyone I think like this. Judge Judy coming on. I think this is a case for Judge Judy. I'm glad I decided to make my own web page because, God forbid, I told somebody what I want on the web page. I mean. Does this guy do it for his living or is it a side job? I hope it's a side job because if this is his living, he is going to fail in life. <laughs> He's going to die a partner. Yeah, because uh, initially he just wrote, oh, sorry. Like, oh, 50% of your order's wrong, sorry. I was like, uh, no, you're going to have to, like, do a little better than that because I'm going to murder you. We could just slander him on the show. Every it, show from here on. Well, if these, show, if these shirts don't come out right, I'll post his link to his website and all that fun stuff. I figure I won't burn my bridges before I actually see these shirts. I think I think he might have just done that though. I don't care. Does, he li does care. the guy? It's listen not like I said anything. I don't think he's a listener. I don't. It's well, I know, but he is writing the the link of the show down on the shirts. But um, <laughs> it's you know, it's not like I said anything that's not a hundred percent true right here. So you know, true. you can't get somebody for slander if everything you say is a hundred percent true. And I I could post the emails as proof. So you know, he's a jackass. That's allegedly. Sense. If I say allegedly, it's all right. I think he's retarded, <laughs> allegedly. I concur. There you go. So that was my week. Was, um, yeah, I thought these t-shirts were going to be ready when I got back. 
I know. It was about I, my size. You didn't I, get it for the fat people. You got no, it. No, I did. Those. I I got I got your size actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. So yeah, I even went through the trouble. I changed the order around and uh, got an extra. Hopefully, size. it's not extra small because no one needs to see me in a belly shirt. If know? he fucks up the sizes, that's it. Done. <laughs> but the good thing is I paid through PayPal, and if you have any dispute, they give you your money back instantly. So if there's right. any problem. It'll be settled. So that was, um... I'll still buy a shirt. Well, or I'll win you. one. Can I compete to win one? Sure. Can I be the 10th caller? <laughs> right now. I'm going to have some contests coming up. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, you know, I obviously can't give them all away because I paid $400 and now I can't pay rent. Uh, hopefully my roommate's not listening. Um... No, I could hear the sounds of Warcraft coming through right now. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, that's what I hear all day. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, so you just got back from vacation, is that correct, Mark? I, I did. I got back uh, from, we went to Chicago, then we drove up to Wisconsin to my friend's wedding, a place called Watoma. The twenty It's 20 minutes out of the middle of nowhere. I felt like I was on an episode of Bonanza. It was really weird. But uh, we thought the wedding was going to be bad because I don't know if you guys have been to out-of-state weddings or even weddings. Weddings can be bad at I haven't been to a wedding in like 14 years maybe. Are you serious? Yeah. That's a long time. I've been dodging bullets like the Matrix, man. I, I just don't want to go. And Especially at, the, at, our, at our age because everyone's starting to get married. Now, I know. You know? I was... Uh, I almost went to my buddy Sean's, but it was on, like, Father's Day weekend in, like, Maryland. There was a really big Mets game on TV. No, it was Father's Day week. It was Father's Day weekend. I couldn't go. It was in Maryland, and I had to be... And I've been to a bad Maryland wedding. I mean, it was really bad. The wedding was on two floors, but it didn't need to be. There was no assigned seats, and that's bad, especially when you don't know many people. Because yeah. then you're forced to talk to people or you just act like a hermit with your wife and you just do nothing. It's just very – it was very weird. The food was like – No. No, never in out-of-state weddings. Ugh. Um, actually, there was – this was open bar this weekend, but there's a caveat behind it because they were really trying to be, I guess, cost conscious or as I like to call it, cheap. Um, with this wedding, he actually – because less people showed up than he thought, he opened the bar. Okay. If he didn't open the bar, this wedding would have been torture. I, I mean, real bad. First of all, I got yelled at by the bartender. Um, I ordered um, Kathy, my wife, a drink. It was a cranberry and vodka. And I come back, and I'm looking at it, and it's very red. I was like, there's no vodka in this thing. So I have her taste it, and she's like, no, there's no vodka. So I go back, and this old woman who was the bartender, I was like, yeah, yeah, I don't think you put vodka in this. She's like, I did. I was like, whoa, okay, you did. <laughs> All right, then. So I kind of like was like, you sure about this? I did. I was like, okay, I'll go sit down now. And uh, I was like, well, so I look like a, a big pussy. And I was like, yeah, she put vodka in it, apparently. And my wife's like, no. So then there, we were sitting at a table with a bunch of beautiful people. And for those people who go to the website know that I'm not one of them. <laughs> and... Um, so this guy's like, oh, I'll go get it. So basically, I just got showed up by this, like, good-looking dude. Like, I'm comfortable by saying this. I mean, I'll say his girlfriend was hot, too. So he goes up there and gets a shot of vodka from this the other bartender. who's like a 16-year-old punk. He comes back. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? If I wasn't married, I just totally lost my date right there. Like, I just totally got showed up by a, a guy that could, you know, just won my wife over. And, like, it was just bad. I just felt like such a douchebag. And so that was that was a funny, interesting part of the wedding where you, you get yelled at by the bartender, which you never thought would ever happen. And then I tipped her, which was really retarded on my end. Maybe I'm making your T-shirts. You know what you should have done? You should have uh, you should have just ordered a vodka on the rocks and a cup of cranberry juice. Yeah, well, in retrospect, yes. And it was funny. Like they were like, "We're not doing shots." And the guys, the guy, I was heard the guy what he was saying. He's like, "Well, you, you could pour me a shot. Come on, just do it once." And it was just like, you know, like the Fonz. You know, like that stuff, they weren't even doing shots? You know, a lot of weddings don't do it. A lot of halls refuse to do smart. shots because they're wor worried about the insurance and shit. They did that at my company. We have a, a party every year. And two years ago, they did shots. And everyone got so fucked up, they didn't do shots the next year. 
Yeah, that's the reason why. I think they've had bad experiences where people like get in deep trouble. I've been to one wedding where they did shots, and I, you know, they really weren't didn't want to. And of all things, I mean, Randy probably doesn't remember me being like this, but I actually was like the ringleader behind it. And everyone was like, "Wow, you could do shots at a wedding." I'm like, "I don't know." It was like the first wedding I went. It was like the first wedding I went to in 14 years, uh, at the time. <laughs> but now, like, you can't do shots at a wedding. Good luck trying to find a wedding where you can. I don't know. I but, think they uh, should. I don't know. They they should have uh, extra shots at weddings because most people don't even want to be there. True, and like the bad part about this wedding, I mean, that was that was bad, but it was funny, and we could all laugh about it. The DJ was awful. There were there was literally ten minutes where there wasn't music. No one. I mean, I'm not a dancing kind of guy, but no one danced until four hours into the wedding. Yeah, that's not that, a good sign. It's just got, awkward like that, too. If there's open bar, there should be dancing within, like, the first ten minutes. Well, that's the thing. I had to drive, and I'm in the middle of Wisconsin. We're talking, like, cow-tipping country. So I had to kind of be a little careful about what I was doing. I, but I wanted to get blitzed in the beginning and dance. I figured that would be the way to go. So I'm pretty drunk at the beginning of the wedding, and all I'm doing is sitting there and talking. Like, you know, I don't mind talking to people. That's fine. But get the people the, – the, there's three ways to fuck up a wedding. Bad music, no open bar, and bad food. I, I are, think there's a fourth way. What's I think that? There's like the New York State overly tacky wedding. Yes, if you overdo it and you have everything that's gold plated and oh, gaudy to the nth that. degree. I, agree. I eat. My parents went to a wedding. Um, I think it's this place in Brooklyn where <laughs> the bride and groom come up through the floor in a cloud of smoke. <laughs> what? <laughs> Was it a winger concert? <laughs> <laughs> the best part is my mom came home and she was like, they had the coolest thing ever at this wedding. <laughs> did the groom so go out and do a drum solo? <laughs> my That's friend ridiculous. went to a wedding where they did that to the Rocky theme song. Oh my God. <laughs> I was going to say Xanadu, but all oh, right. Awesome. <laughs> I would do that just for the irony. That's hilarious. The comedic effect. Uh, like if you're going to do that, you've got to be wearing total metal decor headbands and lacy pants. That would be funny. I think it didn't be noting the irony. Just like how how, how ridiculous silly the whole buddies. situation is. You'd have and to you know like they have planned a that out and they were like, you know, our wedding is going to be so cool. Did they have like a laser light show? In the What's really going to put it over the edge is when we come up through the floor in a <laughs> cloud of smoke. People definitely <laughs> won't make fun of that. <laughs> Nobody will match that. Guaranteed ever. that's on YouTube right now. I think uh, it should be like uh, one of those like motivational songs that you hear like during like when they when they raise a banner to the rafters like <laughs> like you know those crazy uh, opera. Oh yeah, I agree with you. That is one way to screw a wedding up is by overdoing it. You know. Oh, here we go with eight video boards and three cameramen. Check it out. Ooh. The bride has spent fifteen thousand dollars on her dress. Well, and a million dollars on food. I just I think it's such a waste of money. All I have to say is you better not be a bridezilla whenever that time comes. Don't. Don't do it. Are you going to be? Am I going to be a bridezilla? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not engaged. <laughs> what was that? I'm really not thinking about this, but I no, I really doubt it. No, just be down to earth when it comes I think to it. I really don't think about it, to be honest. I think you'll be a bridezilla. I will so not be a bridezilla. <laughs> <laughs> I, if it were up to me, when it came down to it, I would just elope. That's the best. You know what? Yeah. I... I wanted to do that after like about a month worth of crap dealing with this crap. I just was like, can we just go to Vegas and elope? It's so much easier. Mm -hmm. You can put money towards a house or something better. And then you put up like a bulletin on MySpace, like I got married. Send your checks and <laughs> no, I think it's cool. I think you know people that do weddings want to make it special. That's great. It's just when you totally lose sight of the picture and spend a hundred thousand dollars on one day it makes no sense to me at all. I hear you. It's just it's it, it does, and especially in New York and in Connecticut and Jersey, like you know, it just is awful around here. But then it's yeah. the reverse when you leave. There's you know, I, I think my friend he got a recommendation on the DJ and the photographer. First of all, they were brothers and they were sitting at our table, which made it awkward because we're, we were the Long Island table, and these two guys are from Green Bay. So what do you think we heard about? Oh, Brett Favre's an idiot. Like I actually had no idea <laughs> what you were well, going to say. I don't know. That's, that's all that's going on over there, though. Like, I let me tell you, there's suicides when he left. 
they have nothing else to do there but talk about Brett Favre. Like, I, I kind of understand why they obsess about the guy because really all there is is this really awesome fast food place called Culver's, which is really good, and that's it. And cheese. Everything is covered in cheese. Would you like some lo mein with cheese? Sure. I'll have that. That sounds yummy. And there's no other sports or anything, right? Oh, I mean, you got the up in Green Bay? No. But, I mean, you got Wisconsin, so they like the Brewers. They like, I guess, the Milwaukee Bucks. I don't know. Oh, you so all, like, the worst teams ever. Well, yeah. Well, the Brewers are good this year, and it's that's a whole nother. Yeah, no rot. base. No, I, there's a new rule. No more baseball talk on this show. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I just enacted it, like, two hours ago. I appreciate oh. that. I just realized I hate baseball, and... <laughs> I've had like six straight guests come on and talk baseball, and I like. No, I, just, I wasn't planning on talking baseball. I, I like sit back and I listen, and I'm just like, you know, I don't want to do that anymore. And I nah. just totally zoned out. Huh. Oh, sorry. I just drop shit. No, it's oh. cool. It's uh, yeah, no, it's uh, that's I'm what just, I generally do during any sort of any type of like sports talk. What well, wasn't even the idea of sports like. talk? It was just the the fact that like they were angry at New Yorkers because we took. We, the, a guy's playing for our team. They're like they're, they're blaming me. Yeah, it's, oh. your, it's your fault because you're signing. Wait, Brett Favre, Favre. 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 Favre is now playing for New York. He is on the Jets. I had no idea. Yeah. So, so the funny thing is, my <laughs> wife at the table, she goes, "Don't you have pictures to take?" Because <laughs> like this, this is the photographer, and he wants to talk football with us. I'm like, I don't want to talk to the photographer and the DJ. You should be playing music. And um, one of the other girls at the table was like, are we going to dance any time this year? <laughs> it was just, like, funny. Like, these guys were, like, completely clueless. He was like, no, drink your cranberry juice. Yeah. <laughs> so you had exactly. a bar with no liquor, a DJ who wasn't playing songs, and a photographer who wasn't taking pictures. That's... Yeah, pretty much. And he, and he was in, like, the uh, Night at the Roxbury uniform, which is very interesting. Uh, I mean, I hate to bring up that movie, but. I think that would actually make the wedding more exciting for me. What, the night at the Roxbury uniform? Yeah. Well, think, at least you know who the camera is. <laughs> I think everybody should be in that uniform. That would be and a fun wedding. I don't know. I might actually go to one. So I really felt actually bad for the bride. Because, like, it, it, I mean, it's going to sound really gay. And it, it, it is gay, I think, actually. But, uh, you know, I felt bad for her because she was like, they didn't even get a first dance. They didn't get any, like, the things she wanted. Like, it looked like she put an effort into the wedding except for this part. And, like, the look on her face, like, it looked like she was going about, about to shoot someone. That so, sucks. That's really sad. Yeah, I felt bad for her. But uh, otherwise, it was a good time. Like, you know, I know it sounds like, oh, that was great. But it actually wasn't bad, maybe because I went in with lowered expectations. But uh, Wait, you, been... you like the wedding after all that? Well, <laughs> the people at our table were really cool. They're, they live out, actually out in Long Beach. And they're pretty much, like, surfer kind of people. So they were kind of like par they were like really yeah. crazy okay so they were fun to hang out with um the food was good and you know it was good to go out the the, the setting of the wedding they had it at the place in the back mm -hmm. and it was outside it was a great day and it was it was nice like that was nice it was just between the bartender yelling at me which actually makes me laugh at the end of the day and uh the DJ, well, the, to be honest with you, I could care less about the DJ. If you want to play shitty music, fine, whatever. So the wedding was cool in the way that, like, going to your friend's place and hanging out on their couch would be cool. Pretty much, yeah. It wasn't, like, um, thousands of dollars. Where it, they could have spent $100, and I would have been happy. But, uh, so what was your wedding like? My wedding was, you know, from what I've been told, this is what I've been told. The music was good. Cool. We had a DJ. The food was really good, and it was, you know, I had a small wedding. I had it actually, you'll know where this is. I had it out in Port Jeff in Long Island at uh, the Metal Club. It was the last place we looked at, and it actually was the best place that we thought. But uh, I think everybody had a good time. It was open bar. I mean, we didn't cheap out, but it wasn't, we didn't come out of the floor, um, at least intentionally. Um, you know, there was no smoke, except for maybe the one person smoking in the back. Yeah. Um, so... I think there there is some sort of gas fire in Jay's bedroom. Hmm. I'm sorry, Jay's studio. Gas fire? Yeah. So top Something is definitely actually. on fire. I'm pretty sure there's a fire in here. Yeah. Do we, have, do we have to stop the podcast? It might actually be in your building, not your not your bedroom. Well, something is on fire. Uh, <laughs> you think we should escape just in case? 
if you want to do a quick recon mission, I wouldn't be opposed. Um, it smells getting stronger. <laughs> yeah, no, there's definitely a fire going on somewhere. Hold on one second. This would be, check uh, this out. yeah, please do a recon and make, just make sure, like, the stove's off or maybe open the window. We did a podcast uh, about a month ago where the building across the street was on fire. Um, it's from outside. It's from outside? I think it's around the Oh, okay. Are they barbecuing downstairs? Hopefully. I got scared. Was, I was like, all right. Last time this happened, there was a building on fire. So, uh. <laughs> you sure the doc isn't doing some kind of weird experiment in the you, other room? You never know. You never know. He's setting up his lab. <laughs> hey, have you heard about the professor, by the way? Have I you heard did. The, uh, the professor, uh, one time uh, guest host on the show, is uh, getting itched. Yep. So, uh, congratulations. I know you don't listen to the show, but, uh, you know. If you do, congratulations. Uh, maybe I will have to go to a wedding soon. That could be an interesting wedding, thinking about it. That would be a very interesting wedding. Uh, do you know about her family at all? I know nothing about this girl. Well, I think her family is, like, you know, really pretty, pretty, really Jewish and religious. And I think they're pretty, they're, they're well off, and I think they're kind of a little strict. And then you take Henry's family, who's very, uh, well... His Not. father goes to Tara's still, so I, which is a bar, a, a town bar. So I think that kind of gives you a description that he still is like a, he's one of those guys that's in his fifties and still likes to go out and drink a lot. So which is nothing wrong with that, but it's going to be the clash of the probably tight wads versus the loose people, right? Which could be interesting. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to break my streak. We'll see. That's like, is that like the throw up streak? Or no? You know, uh, I, it's kind of like that, only my wedding streak is longer than my throw-up streak. Oh, okay. I used to pride myself on the throw-up streak, but that kind of went by the wayside. Yeah, I was bragging for a while. I remember uh, one day I was just drinking everything, and uh, somebody was like, beer than liquor. And I'm like, no, 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 no. The rule is beer than liquor, no problem. And then, like, <laughs> two hours later, I was throwing up. Yeah, it's, you don't want to go there. But, uh, so, uh, so much for that thing. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so the wedding was what it was. Uh, you know, there's there's more inside stories, but I, it would make no sense to anyone if I told them. But uh, I thought it was more interesting um, when you when you tell people that are in the friend circle, I guess, of Albany people. But sorry to bar bore you with my uh, bartender getting yelled at story. That's all right. Nobody listens anyway. There you go, so. including the two of you. Uh, uh, yeah, pretty much. I don't know. I'm scared to come back and listen. I'm especially scared of Sunday's episode. So, uh, that was the drunk episode where I drank two forties, and then uh, God knows what happened. I woke up and it was a podcast, and uh, too a little afraid to go back and listen. So I think I think we need people to write in and, and tell tell us what we what they thought of that episode. Uh, I would love that. So, uh, did you go on a recon mission? Well, I, uh, I scoped the situation out, uh -huh. and there's a barbecue downstairs. Oh, okay. Whew. And then I got distracted because Emil pointed out that the sky looked beautiful, so I started taking pictures. Frag! <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I'm sure Randy got picked up on the way back into the studio. <laughs> put on the wood. Doesn't the sky look beautiful, baby? <laughs> well, I just got invited to a party. Awesome. The Doc's party. I like alcohol and beer pong, and yes, I will attend your party. Oh, I wish I could go. Click. You can't come because you're a girl. It's a boys only party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be in San Francisco, stupid. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you heard about this. There was um, this guy in Puerto Rico who died. He was 24 years old. His name was Angel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking he wasn't an angel. Uh, I don't know if you've seen his picture. Um, he does not look like an angel. No, he does not look like an angel. He looks like he was in Public Enemy. Wait, uh, what? He was yeah. He was twenty four, and he died. He was found under oh. a bridge. So he was um, what do you call it? Stuffed, uh, embalmed, embalmed. Will they make you stiff? And propped up against the wall in the living room for three days. Uh, I think you should post this on the website. This is the creepiest picture it, I think I've ever seen. It's pretty creepy. So he's they, like in full pose. Like yeah. He's got the sunglasses on, the hat. 
think What's the guy's really name? Tough. Angel Pantoja Medina. So, oh, years well, old. I could spell that easily. Well, <laughs> just uh, just Google. Um, dead guy standing up in yeah. full uniform. Yeah, just, Angel. just Google dead guy standing up. Um, it's pretty damn creepy. Actually, I'm going to send you a, uh, a message on Skype so you can see it. All right. But here anyway. Come, here um, comes a live reaction. Yeah. Uh, where is your... Oh, there it is. This is both really scary and really sad at the same time. Yeah, it's... Um, so they prop this guy up against the, the wall in the living room. And... Um, wow. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm such an idiot. I tried to, like... Uh, I'm using two computers, and I copied it on one computer and pasted I it on the that. other computer, and it totally didn't work because it's impossible for that to work. Uh, <laughs> but I saw it, and it didn't occur to me that it wasn't going to work. Yeah. Sure I'm, mental I'm telepathy. so enthralled by this picture. Yeah, it's, uh, so they prop this guy up against the wall in the living room for wow. three days. and uh, All right, I it found his, it. You found it? Okay. Uh -huh. it's coming I have up a right. question. Okay, they, keep, they use embalming fluid. Why yeah. Did it smell after three days? Oh, creepy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, it would definitely. I think it would smell. Were they um, just like putting a lot of perfume on him? I don't know, but this is the part that got me. All right. <laughs> it's not the part about him standing up. No, that wasn't it. Well, that dead. wasn't it. Um, his mother asked him to fulfill her dead son's last wish, so. I, I think she may have read her son's last wish wrong because I really don't think that being propped up in the living room looking like a creep was his last wish. Uh, I like camouflage Yankee cap. That's yeah. a nice touch. Yo, Ma, if I die unexpectedly, prop me up against the wall and leave me there all week, yo. Put sunglasses on me. Yeah, yeah. I'm, glad he, I'm glad he's blocked from the sun. I was just going to say <laughs> Yo, wow. make sure my hat's a little bit crooked while I'm propped to get up against the wall. Okay, what I don't understand also is how there is a picture of him that was taken and put in the news. Did his mom do this? Yeah, I bet. It, no, uh, I bet the reporter. I mean, if you're a reporter and you hear about this story, you're running to the funeral home. You want to get a picture of this shit. This was actually in a funeral home. Yeah, this is in a funeral home for three days. I really doubt that was his last wish. I really, really doubt that. I gotta wonder if he fell over once and someone actually had to like, oh, oh shit, we gotta pick him up. The fucking maid coming in to clean up at night, wow. and there's just like a fucking homie corpse in the corner of the room. Here's what I don't get. Is he yeah, had a fall. last wish, right? Her dead son's last wish. She had to misinterpret but he, that. But he wasn't dying. Like, he was found under a bridge. She's insane, <laughs> and that's... <laughs> she, she somehow came up with that being his last wish. That, there's no way that was his last like, would wish. Would that just come up in regular conversation? Like, if I ever die, I would like you to embalm me <laughs> in standing position. <laughs> she must not have <laughs> spoken whatever language she was speaking in because that's not even close. I don't think that's one of the check boxes in the this, living will. It's really, it's just. No, really that's the whole point is to mock this because <laughs> it's ridiculous. There's no way that. I can't believe this even happened on this planet. Wow. So wrong. So and yeah, that's that why terrorists hate us. You need to take yeah. that off the screen, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna haunt me. So that 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 should be my avatar <laughs> in your uh, forum. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, that was that's just. Um, I I don't even know what to say anymore about that. That that guy is still. Uh, I think he finally got put in the ground. Um, but you I've, must have been in that position still. I've heard of crazy last wishes before, but nobody wishes that for their last wish. Like Hunter S. Thompson, the guy who wrote Fear and Loathing, his last wish was to have his corpse shot out of a cannon. Now, that's funny, and I and they actually had to do that, which was even funnier. But, I mean, I guess, like, if you're kind of crazy, that kind of makes sense. Did he get shot into the ocean? Or just, like, shot onto the ground? You know, I don't know. It would be funny if they just shot it straight into a wall. <laughs> a bullseye target? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on some apartment building. They put a like needle. unsuspecting building. They stick a spike on his head and they shoot him into a pin and tail on the donkey map. <laughs> or like a big dartboard. They just Tonight, put a dart on Fox. <laughs> uh, there funny. was um, 
my dad actually wants when uh, when he dies, he wants a um, what a, a traffic meter as a headstone that says expired. <laughs> <laughs> a parking meter. That's funny. I can see your dad actually doing that though. My mom is Who dead would... against it, and I said he said it many times. I'm like that's his last wish. If that's what he wants, we got to do it. He should write well, that into his. He should. I, I think well. it's I think it's hilarious. And who would be the meter mate? That's the question. I'll go on. No, no, no. It, it has to be expired. Oh, okay. Can you imagine some like uh, homeless guy walking up to the? Oh, let me put a quarter in here and see what happens. Yeah, I'll go in there to make sure people don't put in quarters. That'd be kind of messed up, wouldn't it? It would. What would happen if you put the quarter in now? It would probably go up to. He would come out of the ground, yeah. and smoke would follow him. You ever see Pet Cemetery? Kind of like that. That was a good movie. That was a good horror movie, actually. It was. It was good. For its time. That um, actually scared me. I think that's a really funny idea, though. The expired sign. Maybe I'll get a matching headstone and uh, be parked next to him. <laughs> Start a tradition. The kind of family tradition is the line of the parking meters. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, Jay, really I, I think I found out the way you're going to go. I don't know if you're in the Final Fantasy XI, but I just read, read about this earlier today. What's um, Final Fantasy Eleven? It's a video game. It's the I don't sequel know. to Final Fantasy X. Yes. <laughs> I think they had Final Fantasy One like twenty years ago. <laughs> they did. I don't e Is it so awesome they had to make eleven? Uh it's so awesome they had to make like four. Everything after that is like optional. Actually there wasn't Final Fantasy Ten. They went right to Ocean's Eleven, they went right to Final Fantasy Eleven. <laughs> but uh no, some I was just reading about this. People have played this game for 18 hours straight. People were passing out and getting physically ill. They had to stop them from playing. Darwin. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Total Darwin. Totally. If you play a game to the point where you're passing out, please continue just a little bit longer. Just let them like, do it. Let them die of natural causes. Every game Starving I play, you. like I like games, Maybe but I love games. I do, but I also like I like just you know, coming home, playing a game for an hour, and putting it down. And games like that, where you have to play online, people play, like Martin just said, for like 18 hours, so that like, if you go on to play, they're so good, you can't do anything. And every game is like that now. There's always like a group of people who spend their entire life playing a game, and you just like, you know, like we're Here's my in the room next door. If you tried to play him, uh, you'd lose instantly. And it's like that with every game now. Can, can you even do anything for 18 straight hours? Like, seriously. I, I don't know if I've ever done anything in my you, life you besides maybe I sleep. No, I don't even think I can sleep 18 hours. I could I, maybe I'm sleep done. 12. I, it's just insane to me. Like, how can you do that? Like, I've been drunk for 18 hours. My S eyes would start Santa spin. Con, every SantaCon, I'm drunk for 18 hours. But that's like <laughs> stay awake while you're drunk for 18 hours. You drink more. I would just pass out. You're on your feet. I would pass out standing. You're dancing and you're screaming ho, ho, ho in people's faces. So you're being super creepy. Yeah, oh, super yeah. creepy, yeah. I really well, wish I would have done that. Well, Randy would pass out oh, and look like our uh, friend Angel. I would I look think. like a homeless Santa. SantaCon.com, check it out. 500 Santas running around drunk. It's my yearly tradition. Uh, November this year, though, Lebowski Fest. Everyone dresses up as big Lebowski characters and goes bowling. You have never seen that? Neither have I. But now that I've joined Netflix, it's on my queue. And Both of you haven't seen The Big Lebowski. I think I saw it, like five minutes of it many wow. years ago. It's crazy, right? That's, that's one of my favorite movies. I know. Crazy. Sorry. We'll catch <sighs> up. we got to have a movie night, folks. I love movie <laughs> night. I don't like it. I love it. Well, you, we should do that more often. Me and uh, original guest host Joel do that like once a week. Can I join? Yeah, you sure can. Um, now that I'm in Netflix, I can actually rent a movie and bring it. You're on the Cool Kids Club. Um, I currently have The Holiday, which I haven't finished yet. Never heard of it. It's a love story with Kate Winslet. Maybe you can't come to movie night. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we I think the rule is no chick flicks at movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, we're going to pre-screen your, uh, your movies here. <laughs> hey, Jay, the last time I was on, you mentioned the... Sorry. Last, Jay, last time I was on, you mentioned the Little Mermaid sequel or something like that. You know they're making another one. I just saw a commercial for it. Prequel. I just saw that before we started the show. And all I could think of was what you were saying and like how bad it might even be even further. 
awful. Wait, I, I, did you see it? The sequel? Yes. Why? Because I loved the first one. Really? Yes, I love the first one. I don't care. No, um, that's kind of cute. Uh, second one, awful. And prequel, I'm sure, will be just as awful. But you're going to watch it because you no. can't control yourself. No, I'm scarred from the second one. That I don't know. No. Are you going to see it in the movie theater? No. Straight to video. Yeah. Oh, I do that's Netflix. shocking. Yeah, it's, I don't know, Disney. I'm going to check your queue now that we're Netflix friends. i got to be careful what I queue <laughs> up now. <about. laughs> now it's not just gay porn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was I funny. Just, I was on the road this uh uh, I was driving a lot, and I, I said I, I want to join Netflix. So like, I used to work at a video store of all things. You think I'd be on a Netflix account, I but I just I VOD, um, which I think is kind of easy. But they don't have half the movies you want. So I and I got yelled at for it. Like, what's so bad about joining Netflix? I think it's like a great idea. I don't know. I mean, you, Jay, you like it, right? I joined Netflix as a hate blockbuster. Exactly. I was trying I, to get this movie Dig for about four months and it was never in so I went up and I rented something and they're like did you find everything you're looking for and I said no I've been trying to get this movie for months I think it's stolen you know your copy like it's not that popular of a movie it has to have been stolen and the lady just goes oh and that was it so I said alright fuck you I went home signed up for Netflix and uh, been happy ever since and this conversation recorded in 2001 yeah. <laughs> so I, I got another article if you guys want to um, go for it. That. How uh, could it possibly top that last article? Uh, I think it might get you a little angry, but um. Oh, I, I know what you're gonna. I I saw it briefly, and I know because I just heard about this this morning. I didn't even know. I'm gonna stay out of this one. People <laughs> are boycotting the movie Tropical Thunder. Oh, not because of Robert Downey Jr. becoming black, right? That's what you would think, but that's not why they're banning, they're uh, boycotting it. They, uh, by the way, these people are just ruining the planet because um, freedom of speech, First Amendment, just gone. No, no man- they're not. Here's the thing: you can boycott. That is freedom of speech. Yeah, but everyone gets no. mad and boycotts and complains that, about that everything is. that came to that, just. That's what's just shut the fuck up. I think and- you right now are being a hypocrite because you're saying freedom of speech. So you shouldn't boycott and speak your mind so that the producers can make whatever they want. The problem is interrupted. the problem is the studio is going to pull the movie or it's not going to come out on DVD or they're going to cut out certain scenes. That is absolutely not true. First, let's say what this is. Ben Stiller uh, makes fun of retarded people and he said, I think he pre- pretends to be retarded and he says, go, go full retarded. Is like his like motto in it, and uh, people are getting mad because he uses the word retarded. No, it's not because he uses the word retarded. It's because the way he says it and the because he's portraying retarded. Listen, you know I don't agree with it. I find it offensive. Why? I, Why though? I don't get it. I, I'm not. We're not. I'm not even going to go there. I think it, it's just it's offensive to me. But retard. But you're not retarded. But I. I work with that population. But they don't know they're being made fun of. Of course they do. No, they don't. Of course they do. We're not we're not gonna we're not talking about this, They've, but they, they do. When was the last time a retired person said It happens all the time. Bed Stiller is I'm not <laughs> <laughs> She's but, like ready to walk out. <laughs> I'm not going there. But I feel like these protests and there are a lot of protests are gonna do nothing but make the movie more popular because it's drawing attention to it. Um I don't know. Shit like that got Don Imus fired, and, and then rehired. Yeah, fired. The movie's out. Every time this happens for a movie, people find out about it. They get more excited about it, and they have to go see it to what everything to see. All what publicity is good publicity. I don't know. Absolutely. I think shit gets cut out. Like Family Guy did that episode where they made fun of Jewish people, and the episode got banned on Fox. Like shit like that always happens. But it's a movie. They're not cutting anything out of it. It right. gets released on DVD. So well, what? What's different between him making fun of retards and Borat making fun of Jews? I mean, or Robert Downey Jr. Okay, Ben Stiller isn't retarded, and, and, and uh, what's, Sasha Baron Cohen's Jewish. But the well, Robert the Downey Jr. in the same movie making fun of black people. Exactly. He's, stere- he's playing a stereotypical black guy. Listen, it, we're going to the merits right now of whether you can or cannot make fun. 
I think the point is just that people have the right to speak their mind about whatever it is. Right. Even if it's totally offensive to you, or in this case, completely non-offensive. But it's just a... I think it's anyone's right to, to speak out. And, and I don't think you can really complain about that too much. I just feel like no matter what happens, people complain about it. And a lot of times it works and the shit gets censored. Like, yeah, you have your right to complain about shit, but... The fact that people have no spine and they fire people and censor stuff, I think that's what where the problem lies. Okay. I, I have no problem with people picketing in the streets. They think it's offensive. Fine. I also think just don't watch it and shut the fuck up, but you have every right to do that. But I also get mad at the, the bosses who are worried about publicity and end up cutting the scenes out or firing the people who are doing it or not allowing stuff to be released. That's where I have the problem. Well, this goes along the lines with those that website. The uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the website where uh, the holy people, like the really religious people, rate the movies, and the only no, movies. No, I would love like, to go on that though. They like Gone with the Wind, but any like movie that came out after like 1970 is blasphemous because it has any kind of sexual. Do you have a link to this? Uh, I could find it. I'll find, find it. it. Post it on the forums because I want everyone to go wreak havoc there. I mean, it's awful. It's it's really like scary. It's the it's completely. Re- it's like the God hate fag. The gods hate fags. People. I don't know if you ever heard of them. They're the kind of people that show up at, at like a gay wedding and will just totally pick it right outside of it or something like that. Right, right. Because, uh, you know, God loves picketers. <laughs> what are you Listen, saying? I am like the. I'm totally not PC. I find it. Totally, completely aggravating when people go overboard with being PC. I just think that you have the right to make a stink and complain as long as you're not bothering anyone. You know, like I said, I don't mind if you mm-hmm. complain. I, the fact that it works is what pisses me off because you do have the right to make fun of retarded people. You have the right to make an entire full-length movie making fun of retarded people. The fact and they that, have the right to complain about it. Right, but the, yeah. but the fact is if somebody did that, the movie would get banned and you'd never see it. That's, that's where the problem lies. You really think it's a problem that you can't make a whole movie? Yes, I think it's a huge problem. Because, fun of- yes, because if you ban a movie making fun of retarded people, then, uh, you, then that opens the door for people to complain about making fun of gay people, black people, Irish people, white people. But they, yeah. they do complain about that too. That doesn't open the door. That's already being done. Yeah, but when it gets pulled, it sets precedent, and it makes it easier to ban other things. And after a while, everything gets banned, and then there's no comedy anymore. That's why every time you turn on NBC, it is a family sitcom with three siblings uh, living in a middle class home. That's like every sitcom because everything else is too offensive to everyone. So you got to whitewash every joke. And make it like so it doesn't offend anyone. Well, I think it's more of a systematic issue. You know, I, I think at the core, America is just very conservative when it comes to film and, and TV. That brings me to the Olympic coverage. I was watching women's volleyball uh, two Ooh. days ago. Sorry. And they had cheerleaders on the side, and they would not show the cheerleaders for a half a second. But they would cut to a commercial really quick if the cheerleaders ran out. Mm-hmm. They would wait until they left to come back from the commercial. And these girls work all year on their performances. And they deserve to have their performances shown on TV. <laughs> and I think it's offensive that their performances are being censored. That's what I think. I think that's, that's very aware of you. It is. You know? I'm just looking You're out really for these looking people. looking out for those girls. They put every... This is their career. They yeah. put everything they have into these performances, and they're just not yeah, that's being caring. shown. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's the anti NFL telecast, because if you watch football, that's all they show. They'll no. Go to well, what do you want? What football channel are you watching, dude? <laughs> if you ever watch, watch Fox this year? Watch a football game this year, and you'll see when they go to commercial, look for the hot chick. That's what producers do. They look for the hot chick. Yeah, that's and a, they also have a three second rule. Look for the hot chick and see, count to three. If she's still on the screen, I'll give you 10 bucks. Because that really, be I think um, watching football should be all about spotlighting the cheerleaders. Once again, <laughs> they train all year for these performances, and the second they go on the, the field, they, they go right to commercial. They're not on for more than three seconds. Aren't they there to like amp the crowd up, though? 
Uh, the crowd and the team, yeah. And But, like, sometimes they're doing their performance, and they'll just show a fat old dude on the sideline. <laughs> and I can listen to him and watch the cheerleaders. I really don't need to see him and hear him. You know what I mean? Do you also think that the cheerleaders should wear bikinis? Mandated? Well, the, the beach volleyball ones were. Are you serious? Yeah, well, it's beach volleyball. They were on. Is the, that why you're focusing in the on sand. how unjust it is that I was pretty the mad? Beach yeah, but, volleyball uh, cheerleaders are not. No, but they do it in every sport. I mean, yeah. you know, they do it in football. They do it in basketball. They just don't show them. And I just think they should drop a pole from the center of the scoreboard at this point. Yeah, that's you know, it that's what it's. <laughs> I just think it's like we're like a country of prudes, and it's like somebody's gonna oh, call totally. up. Some hairy lesbian is going to call up and get offended if they show a cheerleader for more than four seconds, say how oh, defi defiling women when the, it's not like they're forced to do it. This is like their careers, and I think it's bullshit that they can't be seen. I'm just looking out for the woman here. Yeah. No, no, I, I respect that. Mm -hmm. Not the hairy just, lesbians, just the, uh, the normal just women. Just the really hot ones wearing bikinis or short dresses. Or anyone with Jumping. a sense of reality that doesn't complain about everything people do. Like, some people base their lives on just complaining about all the shit people are doing. It's definitely true. And if, like, if this show was on a, a radio station, we would get complaints about what I just said. Your show wouldn't last ten seconds. Some Probably people not. People just no. really don't have a lot to do. Or they need something to fill a void, and I think taking up a cause is a really good way to do that sometimes. They need to eat jello until they choke on it. And uh, be done with it. That's what I think. Yeah. Or read a book. Or read no. a good book. There's plenty of books out there. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all for protesting or speaking out about something you care about. I just think doing it for the sake of doing it is kind of silly. Do they really care about it, half these people? I don't or know. are they really just bored, miserable people who just want something to do? I would give it like a 50-50. All right, well, the other 50% should kill themselves. That's just my, you know, that's what I think. If you really, really are sincerely in tears because Ben Stiller said I'm retarded, fine, go out and pick it. If you are just, like, an asshole and is bored, then uh, find something better to do. That's what I think. Uh, that movie looks like a bag of shit anyway, so who cares? <laughs> the end right. of the movie. Not about what you said, but about that stupid movie anyway. Yeah, second of all, it's a Ben Stiller movie, so who the fuck cares? Because it's a piece of shit that won't be seen in uh, a year anyway. Exactly. Although I heard it was one of his better movies, but... Wow. Wait, actually, that's yeah. like I took a crap, and saw it? the turd yeah. smells better than the other one, so that's a better crap. I'm yeah, sorry. exactly. That one is more solid than his uh, liquidy crap of last year. I haven't liked anything since Ben Stiller did since... Well, there's something about Mary was good, and then his show was really good, actually, if you guys remember it. Yeah, his, first, his show and his first movie, and then ever since then, it's been uh, a boop. I'm going to make a, a museum movie, and uh, maybe I'll put a Wilson in it. Hmm, another Wilson movie. The annoying What's, Wilson. The one with the Lego nose. Yeah. <laughs> I want an explanation. He should... Every movie with him in it should just begin with him explaining what the fuck's up with his nose. <laughs> then I can pay attention to the rest of the movie. Yeah, all you do is just get fixated on a stupid nose. Exactly. And the fact that he it's almost tried to kill himself, but that's nothing to be worried about. And the only thing I can think of when I see him is that commercial that they played every half hour for about three months where he goes, That's what I call my Kung Pao chicken. <laughs> is between every commercial break for about four months, I was... Uh, Shanghai Nights or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That was Every funny. time I was watching anything, that's what I call my Kung Pao chicken. That's what I call my Kung Pao. I was, ugh. Oh, and you found yourself just saying that randomly when you went out, and you were like, what the fuck did I just say? No, I'd hear other people say it, and I'd want to destroy them. <laughs> oh, boy. So you were talking actually about, uh, you know, how, like, you don't want to see a raging lesbian or whatever. You, know, you were saying only good, the good-looking people, but... I'll get to the it'll be a weird segue to get to gay wait, people. Wait, what was they saying? <laughs> I don't know what you were saying. We talked about you mentioned raging the word raging lesbian. Up. It made me think about the wedding. Okay. Again, there was a it was a really flamboyant gay guy at this wedding, mm -hmm. and he was like he was the only one actually somehow found a way to dance to some of the music. Well, obviously and yes. 
I don't know. He reminded me of that. I, I, not that I watch it because I don't. That Queer Eye show. He reminded me of the blonde guy. He was like this. He was like a clone. The, the blonde guy went to high school with us. Did you know that? What that Carson guy? Yeah, he he went to our high school. My that's mom, the my guy mom, that became that's famous. Like, yeah, my mom said he just went to a recent reunion. Not like literally with us, right? No, not no, with before us. us. I think I probably would have noticed us. him like skipping around the hallway. <laughs> I, I like him a lot, actually. I think he's pretty cool. But okay. well, not, it's good that Randy's here. I didn't think that there would be a woman today, but my wife wants wants a gay guy as her friend. Like she wants the emotional friend now, because this guy was um, the bride's best friend, and now my wife wants one. It's like a toy. I want a gay friend. Like is. Is there something to that, or is this just a random thing that came out of her mouth? I think that's completely offensive. <laughs> Jay's gonna pick it now. I'm gonna. This is my new cause. You I don't, can't I don't pick want, friends I just because of thing. their uh, sexuality. You, you got to uh, pick them on personality. It wasn't just that. It was just the you know. I guess he's a guy that's unthreatening. I don't know what it is. It was something about him, like oh, I have to dance with him. I have to talk to him. Like what? What's wrong with you? Maybe your curtain in the carpet scheme sucks and she wants advice. <laughs> it was just creepy. But I have to say, though, if, if I were to be a gay guy, I would act like that guy. I would totally be the crazy, dancing, r- ridiculous nut at the, at the wedding. Because you can be. Yeah. Without getting made fun of. Like the, Everyone was like, this guy's the life of the party. But if you're like a straight guy and you're doing that shit, you're a big fag. You're a drunk asshole. Exactly. It's very, it, it's interesting just because of your sexuality, how like people can totally change their opinion of you. Yeah. And now I've totally offended some gay people out there. That's right. I think every segment we've done so far is going to result in picketing. That's true. We offended Ben Stiller fans. Oh, those Wait. are the worst. Yeah, they are, <laughs> literally. The worst. I don't know how he has any, but I think we do that every other show. We alternate with uh, Will Ferrell. So. Will Ferrell, Ben Stiller, Tennis. Tennis? Uh, tennis, anyone? Huh? No, I said Will Ferrell, uh, Ben Stiller, tennis. It's like a tennis match we make. Oh, oh, hit. oh, I thought you wanted to add tennis to the rotation of things we hate. <laughs> <laughs> it was like... You were like Ben Stiller, Will Ferrell, and tennis. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I was like, I don't, I don't feel that it. strongly about tennis. <laughs> I'm on my F game today. <laughs> I mean, I don't like the... I do want to see a DNA test on the, the Williams sister brutes. But, uh, Wait to make sure they're not men. Right, exactly. I want a ball sack check on the Williams sisters, <laughs> but they could so kick everyone's ass. Oh, that absolutely, I've ever met, absolutely, including you, uh, especially yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> they're so scary. They are the scariest, manliest, scary men. They make those crazy noises too, like. Rah! Oh, dude! If I saw, if I was playing tennis and one of those things came up, uh, I was like a forfeit. I lose. I'm the second best. <laughs> Men, ape, or tennis player? That's what uh, I said. Oh. Mapler? Sorry. Mapler. <laughs> Isn't that a guy from Vermont? Uh, it could be. Could, could be. be. So you were talking about the Olympics. Do you guys, I, I can't pinpoint it, but do you guys find Michael Phelps creepy at all? Or at uh, least his mother? <laughs> his mother's annoying because every time he swims they have to show her like screaming the entire time and uh it's like i get it you're into it you know she must have been one of those parents that like pushed him into swimming he probably was like i don't want to go swimming you're well, going does any swimming. kid really want to swim for eight hours a day really Wait, i i used to swim no yeah, I but did you swim though, for like eight hours a day no like, i have to say though parents that that get their kids to swim at an early age are usually very very hardcore like mm-hmm. they start them at two years old and it's like two to three hours of practice starting a day. Yeah, I don't think you should make kids that young. You, I don't think you should force them into uh, doing shit like that. Physical activity. Most of the time it stunts your growth. No, physical activity is one thing. Like, what the the point where you have like a three-year-old with like, you know, huge biceps. Like, that's where it's like a problem. Those people are always like, like, I don't know. I feel like all the wrestlers and stuff, they're all like five foot two. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, the kid's too young to make a decision for himself. Maybe the kid doesn't want to, uh, you know, do somersaults for 
four hours a day for its entire childhood. Yeah, I think it's weird how, like, you know, bring up wrestling. A lot of kids in high school that do wrestling have to keep their weight down. Yeah. To, like, obscenely low weights for a high school boy, like 115 pounds. Yeah, yeah. There's no way that's healthy. No, it's it's very dangerous, and uh, a lot of them end up, like, stunted growth because of that. And it's kind of weird. And, uh, like, the gymnasts, they're all, like, midgets. Yeah. And uh, I don't think they really want to do that. And then what? Like, they all retire at, like, 20. <laughs> like, what do you like do? Like, 22. With, what do these people do with the rest of their life? Cause, they like, promote things. That's it? You know what, though, I have to say? They promote things and make a sick amount of money doing it. That's really not a bad job. I would promote things all day for a sick salary. Yeah, I, I, that's all they do, though. Like, every, like yeah, they promote Look at summer salts, and then you say stuff is good. Yeah, then, you're like, I love the cereal. Where's my check? <laughs> this cereal makes me do a somersault. A really, really awesome somersault. A triple somersault. I go yeah. cuckoo for somersaults and cocoa Look, Look at Mary Lou Retton. She won an Olympic medal in 1984, and she's still relevant somehow every four years. She is around still. She is. Promoting stuff. That's just, uh, I don't know. I mean, she's way over age at age 35, but I mean. Yeah. I thought but, she was like 60 now. Who are you, Grandma? <laughs> No, because she won a gold medal, what, 84? Um, so you got to think she's like 16 or whatever she was. Yeah, she couldn't be more older than like 40. Oh, that's really scary. She looks like she's 60. That's my Maybe point. Maybe it's the stunted growth. Exactly. All these people are just look like creeps in about 10 years. <laughs> All those times she hit her head on the she floor. She looks like a midget. Like, like, like a creepy old, old midget. With really what broad shoulders. does a big snowstorm. That's what I got to wonder. Does she get scared? Uh, yeah. Or buried. <laughs> <laughs> or both interesting so I will say that Michael Phelps doesn't creep me out as much as um, I find him incredibly attractive <laughs> <He's> like, just, <laughs> really? I just wanted to bring that up yeah yeah we did a whole bit uh, last week about how Michael Phelps gets more ass than anyone and it's probably true I think he's too busy training uh, well have you heard about his diet? 12,000 calories We did. I think I went over the wow. whole menu last week 12,000 calories a day. Now, can you eat that 12,000 calories in, like, Snickers bars? No, he eats two pounds of spaghetti and an entire pizza, uh, a whole bunch of other shit. That's insane. Yeah. Two pounds of spaghetti is, like, a massive amount of spaghetti. That's in one sitting or for breakfast? Like, he does it breakfast, lunch, and dinner? No, lunch is a pound of spaghetti and two sandwiches, and dinner is another pound of spaghetti and a whole pizza. Wow. Yeah. Breakfast is equally as big, but breakfast is uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Or like, really awesome. That is There's cool. no vegetables in there, though. Nope. Perfect diet. That kind of sounds like a dream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All carbs <laughs> and uh, no vegetables. That's pretty much what mm-hmm. I eat, only it uh, doesn't really work out as well for me. I think you're yeah, supposed the ta- to do The Taco Bell diet doesn't work. If you do that. <sighs> I've been going to the gym for a day. A day, yeah. I joined a gym yesterday, so uh, paying for it today. I don't want to say anything, but you're looking pretty buff since yesterday. Uh, you know, I guess it shows, you know. Yeah. I didn't pick up an Xbox controller yesterday. I actually picked up a weight. My muscles you feel like- What the fuck is going on? What were you saying? I said, are you feeling all right? What did you Jordan? say to me? <laughs> Excuse me? It's all tough now that you're working out. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, Roy Rage. <laughs> Roy Rage, come on, man. You got to stay out of that GNC. <laughs> They sell steroids at GNC now? They sell everything. You just got to ask them the correct way. I walked into a GNC once, and I was like, uh, I want to pass a drug test. And he, like, reached behind the counter, and he picked up, like, a bottle of pills. And I was like, all right. I kind of like this place. You're like, I would like organic crack cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> the healthy kind. Yeah. <sighs> well, I think we're almost out of time. <laughs> So glad we just ended on that note. Yeah, crack cocaine crack at a time. We're at that was for the kids. <laughs> that one, that one, uh, really fast actually. Yeah, it did. Uh, I, I'm not gonna plug everything this week. I'm not gonna ask everyone to, to vote. In Podcast Alley, join the forums, or any of that shit. What I am gonna ask is for people to write a quick review on iTunes. Uh, that is very important. And we've been neglecting to mention that. So anyone who has iTunes, please just write a quick review. 
give us a good star rating, and that will help the show a lot. And uh, maybe Jay won't be as disgruntled next week. Impossible. Possible. Impossible. Possible. Well, if we get, they only list like 100 comedies in iTunes. You can search for Brink of Sanity and it shows up, but they only feature like 100. And if you get a lot of reviews, you actually show up in that 100. So when people are browsing, they come across it. So I'm just asking everyone to write a review and uh, get us into there. And uh, that'll help the show out a bunch. Uh, you got anything else you guys want to talk about? I think I'm good. Uh, Everyone's no. good. All right. Well, I guess that's it then. So thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. Uh, we're going to have uh, Lauren and Leon sighting again next week. And uh, So please uh, write a review on iTunes, and we'll be back soon. Thanks for coming, Martin. See you later, man. Thanks for coming, Randy. My pleasure. And, uh, yeah, the three of you that listen, thank you. Uh, <laughs> goodbye. It was a pleasure. <laughs>